Well, I've been waiting maybe 30 years to, to say this stuff because it was 30 years ago that I found myself uh, with two kids to raise and no income and no marketable skills, and <laughs> no job. And uh, I had, some, I was going to have some income for a little while, but you know, I was seeing the emergence of the new age spirituality with Neil Donald Walsh and, and Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson and uh, Wayne Dyer. I'm going, why can't I be in there, in that group? I call them the new age dog and pony show, Brat Pack. <laughs> I, I know as much as they do, at least I thought I did. And why couldn't I have a shtick like that? What would it be if I did, if I was going to get in that league? So I came up with the idea of, oh, how about a comical self-help book? You know, for, for, for young people that only has a few pages. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so... So how did I come up with the content for the comical self-help book? And I want to tell you how I came up with the idea of being a huckster because you know, if you look up what huckster means, in the in the beginning it only just meant somebody who sells stuff, you know, at a carnival, you know, just promotes stuff and turns it over. You're a huckster, you sell stuff. But then it started to have a connotation of selling stuff that wasn't worth anything, that was phony stuff, that was a, a, a cheat or a ripoff. So that's the negative connotation of huckster. And really uh, just having a sense of humor about all the things that we come up with, the collective we, everybody in the society, to sell stuff. I mean, have you? Do, is anybody on that um, the shift network? mailing list <laughs> every day they have a new thing they're selling and it's all some kind of you know concocted way of looking at consciousness and reality and smoke and mirrors and blah blah blah, blah. so that's what i'm doing why not okay so not really no i no i really believe in this so so now when i was in ministerial school I had written the little pamphlet 30 years ago, but I, I didn't know what to do with it. You know, it just, and now I honestly can't find a copy of it anywhere or right now. But so we, I took a course called The Mystical Experience with Rabbi Joseph Schultz, who was on the, uh, taught at the University of Missouri at Kansas City in the Religious Studies Department. And the reason that he taught the mystical experience is because as a rabbi, he had he was a complete materialist in, in Judaism. He he did not believe in anything transcendent. He believed in the tradition of Judaism until his own daughter was hit by a car and had a near-death experience and came back with paranormal abilities. And it shattered his entire paradigm of reality. And he had to come to a new understanding of the nature of reality, which included mystical experience. And being the scholar that he was, the academician that he was, he studied the mystical experience and created a body of work and a respectable, you know, a, um, a legitimate presentation about it. And then Unity School heard about it. We're, they're just down the road from University of Missouri. They said, well, come on down here and teach that class to us. So it was a, an elective at the school, The Mystical Experience with Rabbi Joseph Schultz. And one day after class, I was just hanging around and telling him, you know, um, I wish I could be out there uh, doing the kinds of things that um, those people, you know, that make a lot of money, you know, like Neil Donald Walsh and everybody. He says, Diane, don't become a huckster. <laughs> I said, why not? I want to. <laughs> no, you can't be a huckster. No, that's not honorable. So that's where I got that, that word from. He came up with that word. And I, and I think it's it's comical. And I think that it's good to um, have a light touch and a humorous approach to spirituality and to transcendence and to this, this growth in consciousness. 
And here's what it is. Here's what the work is that I created in this comical self-help book. I was interested in acting when I was younger. And I I didn't know how to get a get a handle on it. Well, the lady down the hall from me in my apartment building had majored in theater. <laughs> I had already finished college majoring in elementary education. And I asked her, Nancy, so how do you learn what acting is? She says, well, here's the only textbook there is. It was Stanislavski's An Actor Prepares. And in that book, I read uh, that acting is looking at the influences around you and seeing the drama and responding from the depth of the character in the story. And it just seemed to me like that was such a profound metaphor for what real life is. That our work is to see the influences around us for what they truly are. They are all of the divine. And I had a huge breakthrough, and this is in my little pamphlet, when um, I was really suffering from a broken heart and a failed romance, and I was just in so much pain. And I knew this man who'd come back from studying with a guru in India. He was a psychiatrist. And after he got back from India, all he would do was sit in a room with his, you know, in cross-legged position and meditate. That's all he would do in wearing white. And if you wanted to have audience with him, you could come in and ask him a question. And I wanted to ask him, what is love? That it causes so much pain. So I did. I went in and I said, what is love? And he thought, and he thought. And finally he said, love is seeing clearly. And I said, what is pain? He said, pain is not seeing clearly. So that gave me a big huh, piece of this work of perception that when you can adjust your perception, your ability to look out from within yourself and see that nothing stands but by love and see that everything comes out of love, that love is the creative force that causes all that you see then you have a certain state of, of being that is transcending the nuts and bolts of, of everyday living, stumbling around down the road of despair and, uh, and, and confusion. To see the influences around us for what they truly are, energies emanating from the soul of the divine, so sacred so sacred to work with your perception. And then, and then the other part is to respond from the place of real depth in yourself. So that necessitates that you have to make contact with the depths of your being. You know, we spend our lives avoiding ourselves. You know, we spend our lives fragmenting our identity so that we don't have to face our real feelings because they're too painful. We spend our lives uh, hiding from the authenticity of coming to terms with what we have chosen and, and the cause and effect going on in our experience. But that's not necessary. And that's not the way to, to live in well-being. Because what this teaching says is that the evidence of well-being is the ability to act in life, to execute purposeful activity. And according to, the, to, to the, the teachings of classical acting, the ability to act is to respond from the, to the influences around you from the place within of depth. So that takes us to making contact with the depths of our being and totally trusting that there is only good that our nature is divine, that we are an eternal,
perfect, whole and free entity of a soul. To get to know ourselves on those terms, to get to realize our identity on that basis is truly ascendance. It's the spiritual path. So when I put this all together, it came out as the High Priestess of Hollywood School of Acting. <laughs> that if you if you put this together, you make it. Uh, you, you, there is this imaginary uh, crazed uh, teacher who has wiry red hair, and she's she's teaching you that in the High Priestess of Hollywood School of Acting, you learn to make contact with the depths of your being and respond from that in life as a divine being of spiritual power whose purpose is to love, whose purpose is to learn the lessons of self-mastery as we learn in the Coptics, and whose response to the influences around them is a response of seeing the divine coming forth in all of the energies and influences, dynamics, your relationships, your opportunities for service, the things that happen are all the divine reaching out to call you forth into greater and greater awareness of the truth of being. So I, I created this, uh, this little pamphlet as a shortcut, you see, to spiritual realization, as a shortcut to well-being in life. So that all you have to do is study your perception, master your perception, and see clearly, and master your connection with the depths of your being, and accept wholly the divinity of yourself, and then improvise, waltz through life, boogie on, and... <laughs> and behave and execute, improvise, purposeful activity as you choose, as you choose, when you are empowered and freed by this approach to living. So I just want to give a few examples of how it works uh, so you can have your stories, okay? <laughs> so you can have a few stories. <laughs> so um, as an example of how powerful this is, so I used to, uh, at one point I was working in a preschool and I was assigned to the infant room as the teacher. It was a really big place and they had infants 12 months and younger and you had to have a ratio of one adult to every four infants and at least two people in the room. And the other teachers, I noticed that the teachers would be like, you know, like, when is my next cigarette break? You know, like, uh, is the shift over yet? Where's the, where's the mop? I got to clean the floor. I, and they would just act like it was just the worst, you know, sentence to have to be in that room doing that work. And I just went in there and I, I, I pulled a complete acting job. I acted as if. And it is the truth. Okay, and this is the best place in the world I could possibly be right now. I'm so happy to be here. And you're here too, you kid. Come on over here. Man, it's so great that you're here. We're both here. Isn't it great? Totally changed the tone, you know. And the uh, the, the kids would lay in the crib <laughs> with their legs crossed over each other, you know. You know, like when you're really good. And they, they just get so mellow. I say, here, you finished with that toy? Here, have this one, whatever. <laughs> they were acting like old cronies <laughs> in that atmosphere of this is yeah. the best place we could possibly be. I'm so glad you're here because I'm here too. And uh, you can do that in any situation, right? Anywhere you are. Then uh, and then I just want to remind you of a movie that ex that exemplifies this. Have you seen the movie Life Is Beautiful? It's a foreign film. Mm -hmm. Everyone should see that movie. It tells the story of uh, well, from the voice of the son who was in a concentration camp with his father when he was about six years old, 
And his father told him that they were in a camp where they were playing a different game every day. And, and he created a context of what they were experiencing that made the little boy completely unaware that they were victims of being in a concentration camp. That's how powerful our context is, our ability to choose our affect, our performance, our acting, executing purposeful activity as beings who are able to see that love is seeing clearly and that we are all divine within. Thank you.